Does Mama like them out? She can't come in here. I'm busy. She can hang out with Dan, me. no. Okay. Sorry, guys. to run to the restroom real quick. <laughs> oh good, you're wearing a t-shirt. I feel better now. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so when I first started doing these, oh, everybody was wearing garb. Well, the presenters were. Wait, so I was I'll wearing you back. Garb. Something happened. Wait. Oh, there we are. Okay, sorry. I was freaking <laughs> out. Like, Where'd it go? Where did it go? Yeah. Okay. I understand. But yeah, so then less and less presenters were wearing garb and I was like, I just gonna not wear a carb either then. So, yeah. I won't lie, when we did, when we do academy, I only make the people who are doing the classes, like the teacher, the main teacher, like that person has to be yeah. in clothes. Everybody else, I've, I've always worn just t-shirts that way. Newcomers don't feel awkward because a lot of them don't have their, yeah. you know, their garb yet. So I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to make you feel awkward. I'm going to dress like you. So it's exactly. fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool, cool. So yeah, makes it much you, easier to. Yeah. Do you have your, um, the questions, do you have them and you're going to moderate them? Cause I did not write them down. I assumed. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. 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 I have, um, I'll be asking you guys the questions. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat and, uh, you know, have everybody muted. And if they want to ask questions, they can raise their hand and I'll keep an eye on that. Very cool. If you guys see somebody and I don't, go ahead and holler. <laughs> okay. yeah. By the way, I'm loving the hair. Thank I haven't you. seen you forever, but it's lighter <laughs> and I'm here for it. I love it, but I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been going lighter and lighter. <laughs> Approved. It, uh, Thumbs up. Hides the gray. <laughs> okay, that is exactly why I did this. And for no other reason. I had no other reason. That was it. So actually, you just taking a sip had me, I should probably go get myself something to drink before the class starts. Do I have time to run and get, get a yes. thing? Cool. All right. Oh yeah, right back. you've got 15 minutes because we'll start Sweet. at five after, Be right so. back. Okay. <laughs> How's it going? Good. Jump G off and got dinner. Put on some garb-ish. Didn't know if we needed to do garb or not. I saw her question, but then in the chat, but I already put on garb. So it's like. Oh, whatever yeah i started wearing garb at the beginning of these and then nobody else was so i was like okay i'm just not gonna worry about it <laughs> so, makes it much easier yeah <clears throat> hey how's it going i hear you me too <laughs> you hear me okay yes ma'am And I feel bad. I told Dan, I'm like, okay, go entertain yourself for an hour. <laughs> and then we're going to go jump in the pool and probably get in the hot tub after that. But I'm like, I feel bad that I have to do this on your birthday, baby. But I'm sure he understands. He does. Hi. <laughs> That's the 
Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. Is that what that is? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Katya, you're muted. You need to unmute. There all you go. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to make me talk or something? I'm going to, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes open. Uh oh. Caffeinate, honey. Yeah, caffeinate. Coffee. Caffeinate. I had, we have meatloaf and broccoli rice casserole for dinner. Yum. Ooh. I know. Ooh, totally good. Awesome. I actually did a good job this time. <laughs> Ooh. My husband made the best tilapia I've had since we lived in Florida. Honest to God, it was so good. Really? Like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I'm like, I'm going to be buying some more fish for you to cook because this is amazing. So. I haven't had dinner yet. I just haven't been hungry. Mm. I don't know. It's... I don't have that problem. I'm <laughs> <always> <laughs> I just, I'm just, we, ha I don't know. I had, had a, I guess I had a big lunch or something. We ate at about 11 o'clock. I just, I'm still not hungry. I'm like, I don't. Yeah. You've been that. proud of me, Katya. I've been studying all day. You're kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> huh? When are you taking the test? Oh, the only time I could get was, are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? I hope so. This Saturday, 8.30 p.m. It's the only spot. I know. That's what I said. For that exact expression is what I said. Huh? For a three hour test. Five hour test. Oh, ouch. Yeah, coffee. Coffee. It's gonna be a thing. It's it's take a nap. Yuck. Yeah. No, that's I'm definitely taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only time I could get. I'm I'm under the gun. Stupid. Yeah. It's so lame. That's well, do the best you can. Gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. I'll tell I you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna ace that algebra part. Tell you what. Woohoo! <laughs> Excited. Just do what you can do. Um, and double check and see <clears throat> if guesses count against you. If you miss it, if it's points off your score, because if you can guess the right answer, I would go for it. Some tests How mark they, you yeah. down for. How would they know? How would they some know? Some tests I was mark you down for guessing, and for wrong answers. The wrong answer, yeah, but how would they know I'm guessing? Because you got the wrong answer. Versus <laughs> leaving it blank, I guess maybe. Right, right. leaving it blank. Right, yeah. I think it's just look. You either got it right or you got it wrong, as what I understand. So. Okay, well, just double check and make sure they don't take points off for incorrect answers. Okay, I will double check. Hi guys that just joined. How are y'all? We are gonna wait until about five after seven to get started. Um, we like to allow just a few minutes for people that are operating on virtual SCA time, so. Is that a thing now? It is indeed, unfortunately. It, is it really? Okay. Yes. Wow. Oh, yeah. I started a class at 7 last night. I had someone log in at 7.30. <laughs> I was hey, like, I feel okay. called out. <laughs> it was not you. You were already there. <laughs> no, but I mean, like. Uh, no, actually, I came in at 7.35. But did it, but did, did you? so what if you get off work late and you like, I think if I was going to be there, I'd be like, hey, just let y'all know I'm going to be late. Is that, are, is that what you mean kind of thing? Or they just roll in? I just, just roll in. in. You just rolled in. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's not really that big a deal. Cause I mean, you just keep going, but. Right. It happens. I won't lie. I I'm really digging was... the fact of the, how, how varied the subjects are. Like, how cool is that? Like you're covering everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't even know there was a need for a class to like how to fill out an officer's form. And I'm like, that totally makes sense. Like, what if you don't know how to fill the thing out? Like, I thought yeah. this whole thing is just Absolutely. genius. Absolutely genius. 
Brilliant. I talked to the Brilliant. protégés and I was like, do we want to do this? The rapier community is doing it. I feel like we can do it. And not just protégés, you know, pelicans and whoever wants to I like teach. how inclusive you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, you know, we can give it a shot and see how it goes. And yeah, it's going really good so far. I think it's a great idea. Oh, uh, so I, I haven't done a lot of these. I'm seeing a lot of people are muted. Is that appropriate etiquette to be on mute? Should I mute? Is that well, a thing? Yes, except for you guys that are on the panel, because you're going to want to talk a lot. So if you, you know, want to just stay off mute so that you can talk, that's fine. Okay. Also, but, muting is you know, good if, you if you've got animals or small children or somebody who's going to interrupt or create noise in the background. Exactly, yeah. Otherwise, I think that's going to yeah. happen here. You can stay unmuted as, you know, for the people that are on the panel and are going to be asking questions. Answering I might questions. have a drive-by cat, but we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is legit. That there's My always vice the president. Yeah, I oh, can yeah. drive by cat too. You never know. <laughs> right now, I have one. My vice president. We have meetings every day at three and she'll like be like yeah okay come on and they like jump on the desk and walk past and it's pretty funny <laughs> yeah real quick i have I a question care. um yeah. about the whole platform so like right now uh -huh. you're in the main large part of my screen and then everyone else is kind of above there but then every now and then uh -huh. someone else will pop into the main screen are you doing that you're doing that no. No. So you've got it on speaker view. So whoever is talking is probably the one that's popping up and being oh. the big picture. Is that right? Okay. So if you go up to the top, there's a little thing that says speaker view, and you should be able to click on that and put it in, what's it called? Where do um, I find that? Tiled, tiled view. And you can see everybody if you do that. Oh, uh, uh, so upper right, mine and says gallery, gallery view. Called, yep, gallery Is view. Is that what yeah. I want? Yep, that's what you want. Aha! Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's, okay, that's very cool. That's the Brady Bunch. Guys, this, this is, this is new to me, okay? <laughs> it's not, this is not a thing that I do a lot of. Mm -mm. Well, we, the, our scribal group has a regular Tuesday night get together where we just sit and we can do scribal stuff or we just talk about anything and so i've kind of started getting used to this stuff okay we use this for work we teach classes on this and do webinars on this and yeah so i'm pretty comfortable with it but i've had a lot of practice too i appreciate it because i don't use this for anything <laughs> I'm a tradeswoman, so we don't have the computer thing you are. at work at all. Yeah. Just don't use yeah, it. you're face-to-face. -face. <laughs> I'm a face-to-facer, yes. So um, you're saying you can't cut hair virtually? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. If she could, she And I weird. wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> Katya, there was some hair coming through that door. <laughs> oh, my God. And they have surgery that you can do, you know, via tele, but you know, not for haircuts yet, apparently. Mm -mm. Not yet. <laughs> Wish I could. I'd have fixed a lot of that, but no. <laughs> so guys, we'll give it until about five after, just to let anybody that's going to come in a little bit late, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. I have some questions um, that were submitted to ask, but... You know, anyone that wants to ask questions at any time, feel free. Um, raise your hand or unmute yourself. There's not that many of us that you can do that. Of those that are on right now, who are current hospitalers? If you can raise your hand or speak up or whatever. You're, oh, well, yeah, you're the kingdom. Of, okay. I'm Namron's current for like maybe five more seconds. <laughs> No, ma'am. No, we have not given you the, the okay to leave. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and and I'm for that today. <laughs> oh, are you? I didn't know that, Ian. Yeah, I get to be the deputy hospitaler down here. Nice. Cool. 
By the way, down here for everybody is Oak Spring. Um, we're not our, our own group yet, and we're building and working on it. Awesome. Where Where is Oak Spring? Oak, Texas or Oklahoma? It's Oklahoma. It's it's uh, our our population base is Ada, Oklahoma. Okay. How far out we're going to spread all that? That hasn't been worked out yet. Yeah. <laughs> so you're reporting to Northern then. Yes, I, re I actually report to Namron. Namron takes that report, bundles it in, and sends it on because I am Namron. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah, they're a canton of Namron. So. We're not even a canton. We are not an official group at all. We keep, getting called, outpost. Yeah, we keep getting called outpost or stronghold or something yeah, along those lines, right. and that's great. We appreciate outpost all that. Outpost sounds cool. Yeah, no, and, and the Baroness done a fantastic job for us, but, you know, I, Yes, who's been, who's current, and well, I'm currently her deputy. <laughs> <laughs> we, I helped uh, my husband and I helped get the Mergenfeld Canton started here two years ago. So I understand cool. how it goes. Yeah. Well, and something I'm sure we'll talk about when we get started. But I feel like everybody in the SCA is a hospital leader, so. At least we should be. <laughs> I have some thoughts on that. I bet you do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I do too. I do. I have some thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure we all know of everybody has people in their group that you go. Mm. My well, <laughs> curiously enough, actually, the, the whole, the, the thoughts um, are actually kind of stemming from a, a conversation that was had uh, where a society uh, hospital or, or chatelaine, as other kingdoms will call it, so it's the same thing, but other groups call it chatelaine. So the society chatelaine had a, a meeting and it was a bunch of us from various kingdoms. And that was one of the big ones was, you know, everyone oh, loves yeah. to say, you know, everyone's a hospitaler. Not so much. Because there's there's some expectations and there's some um, you know kind of like oh you say you're a hospitaler there's kind of some some things you should and should not do and not everybody does that and a lot of times especially in some of these other groups that were chiming in they were like you know we had to tell this person to stop because that's not what we do or that's not who we are or this kingdom never said you could yeah. say that and so there was a lot of there was a lot of that and I didn't know that was going on in some of these other groups and I'm like I was taking notes furiously because I just thought I, I got I got to talk to my regionals and and kind of talk about this my my experience with that is is that not everybody is a chatelaine but the idea of the statement of everybody is a chatelaine is everybody is public relations and some people you don't want them to be <laughs> right well I mean maybe some people are doing the job and then some people are i don't know what to say moonlighting it's it's a hobby i don't know they're, they're i don't know I just, I, they're there to help out and they're, they're doing their best a part of that welcoming but they're not the hospital or the official right word. yeah because everyone i'm sure everyone means well but i mean not everybody knows what to say or even what's the right thing to say or you know oh no we don't do that we haven't done that since 88 like no so it's it's a really tricky thing yeah i bet yeah that's true i haven't thought of that i had neither <laughs> until we had that meeting i was like is that a thing and it's a thing hi everyone hello hello uh, if I have to leave suddenly, I am technically at work. I'm working from home, so if I leave suddenly, please don't take enough time. Um, no problem. And I am coming from a complete place of ignorance as far as us fiddlers go, so I'm kind of hoping to, to learn on that. My guess is that that's based off of the brief conversation that I've seen here and what I've seen other places. Hospitalers are basically hospitality. They're they're welcoming people in. They're kind of the spokespeople for the the organization. Um, they kind of direct people to the right places to get them what they want. Am I um, am I on track there? 
Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. Perfectly. Much. It sounds like it sounds like you've got some people who don't know the difference between doing well, meaning well, and actually doing well, just based on what I just heard. Uh, not really. It, it's more along the lines of, um, I, okay, so I look at it as the hospitaler's main job is we want to make sure that newcomers to the group, whatever group mm -hmm. it is, um, are, are, are made welcome, are, mm -hmm. you know, given the, the information they're looking for. And it's almost always, where's my local group and how do I get involved? So you want to make sure that you know who are your local groups and, oh, you live over here. You need to go. Their group is Mergenfeld. You need to go. Let me introduce you to some of the group people in your group. Um, and, uh, and, and it's also helping people um, either transition because they've moved here from a completely different SCA kingdom and trying to help them kind of, you know, navigate those waters because it's tricky. And then there's the other group's players. They're coming here from maybe the Renaissance fairs or, you know, Amp Guard or the, the, the Civil War reenactors even, helping those folks make the transition so that they can learn their new community and feel welcome and not make some faux pas, which can happen. And a lot of people get really confused by that. Um, but it's that what I was kind of referring to is, you know, you want to make sure you're giving good information and the right information. And sometimes, you know, no matter how well-meaning you are, and I firmly believe 100% of everybody, it means well, no one has any malicious intent, <laughs> but you want to make sure that the information you're giving out is accurate and up to date. Right. And, and, and it can get a little frustrating when someone is giving information that we don't do that anymore or that that is an outdated thing, or, you know, you may have done that in your kingdom, but that's not a tradition that's here. And trying to give that information in the most kindest, friendliest, gentlest way you can, because mm -hmm. there's lots of different ways of, well, we don't really do the squire's chain here. Um, and here's why, or here's the history of that, or, you know, versus we don't do that take that off right now because that's offensive and the ship does not appreciate that. You know what I mean? There's, there's ways of doing that. And it's just, you want to give out that information as accurately and as kindly as you can. Mm -hmm. So that's what that conversation was about is how to, how to do that. Those sorts of things. Did I, did I answer okay. that? Right? Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it seems oh, yeah. to me, it seems to me the, the, and, and I don't know, again, I'm coming from a place of ignorance, is that if you have that documented somewhere and someone's giving the wrong information and say, hey, go look over here, this may help you out. Um, I don't know. That is a big That's problem. That's always a good thing to do. I don't think a lot of this stuff is written down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know when, Thor when I was regional, Northern Regional, and Sorsha was my deputy, we started working on kind of what you were talking about um, with the different um, kind of myths or misconceptions uh, newcomers do have coming into the SCA. Like you can't wear purple, only royals can wear purple or different kingdoms have blue belts versus red belts or green belts or whatever. We kind of started working on a question list like that. Um, and I actually had sent it to Kat earlier today. So Kat has that list. It's not complete and it's not exact and it's not the end all be all, but it's just kind of what she and I had kind of discussed at one point in time, like what do we think these questions are that we had encountered. So there's a little bit of documentation that we personally came up with, but it's nowhere near everything. And that's yeah. great. And I can it just depends that. on where you're from, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you can't get everything because that means that you've written out the, the complete volume of interkingdom anthropology. Exactly. And who wants to read that? That's like stereo instructions. That's a lot. That's, yeah. mm, that's a lot. When you say not everybody can be a hospitaler, that is true. I agree. Not everybody should be talking to new people. But I think to a lesser extent, everybody can be a hospitaler in that they can take 
business cards. Like I have the these and for your baronial business cards. I keep them with me. You know, even if it's somebody who shouldn't be talking to new people, they can hand out cards. Um, Sir Owen has a, the, the uh, um, recruitment and retention class. I don't know if any of y'all have taken it, but when he gets Fantastic done, he is class. so, yeah, he is so Fantastic. enthusiastic. I, I want to jump up and run out and start doing it. And he suggests taking bookmarks and putting mm -hmm. them in like patterns that apply to our period of time. Or he mentions beer. If you have a really nice uh, lager that you like to buy, put one in the, the, the next case behind it so that somebody will buy that and go, oh, what's this, you know? Um, so in that respect, people can be a hospitaler. But yeah, some people just shouldn't talk to new people. Well, I yeah. mean, I, I think you're talking about more or less marketing, not necessarily the hospitaler part, but just marketing and, and okay. putting it out there. But I mean, your marketing people are not the same thing as your public relations people. It, right. It's a different, it's a different thing. I'm sure it falls under, at least for our purposes, it kind of falls under that umbrella. But yeah, I mean, it, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm, I, uh, I kind of agree with you and I kind of don't in the sense that I don't want to say, you know, there are certain people that shouldn't talk to newcomers. No, by all means, everybody talk to the newcomers. They're, they're probably really cool and we probably right. want to get to know them, right. but at the same time, though, to be to be the 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 capital T the hospitaler, we just want to make sure that that person has the the informate the correct information. And we've discussed, you know, when you're going to be the official person who's greeting the newcomers, you know, let's let's put our best foot forward. You know, please, you know, be dressed appropriately. Make sure your personal hygiene is on point. You know, have have present the right image and have your information be up to date and accurate so that when they're going to ask you those questions and they will, they're going to ask you the question that you did not research, um, you know, know where to get your information and know where to get it, that it's right. But no, I think ev everybody can be marketing team, right? But for public relations, when you actually want to be that voice, we probably want to go over a few things and just make sure we're putting our best foot forward for them. Yeah. Uh, just to what Leah was just to touch on what Leah was saying with the bookmarks. I know this isn't, this is marketing, but uh, I used to teach a martial arts class and what we would do is we would take the bookmarks and actually go to the bookstore and put our, our little bookmark in every single book on martial arts uh, I got maybe one call from Barnes and Noble saying, "Please don't do that." They're like, <laughs> "Please stop You're not stealing anything." <laughs> yeah, okay. I know you cannot, you cannot do that in libraries. Do not do that in libraries. Um, I may or may not have done guerrilla marketing at half price books. <laughs> <laughs> On different. the other hand, do talk to the library about being able to stack your bookmarks at the desk where they check things out. Because we have a bookmark they will use. Yeah. So you mentioned guerrilla marketing. Have you ever read that book by J. Conrad Levinson, Guerrilla Marketing? No, I just know some people that were brown coats out in California that did that, and that's how they got the Firefly movie made. That's ah. where I got that from. Yeah, guerrilla like marketing. a good book, though. I should probably check that out. Yeah, it's by J. Conrad <laughs> Levinson. I, for anyone who's doing guerrilla marketing, I highly recommend it. He's got a follow-up book that's guerrilla marketing for social media. So anyway, just throwing that out there. Really, really good book. So highly recommend it. Wrote it down. Okay, guys, let me throw some questions at you from um, some questions that we had submitted. Um, and feel free to, you know, jump in and answer those of you that are on the panel, uh, however you would like. Um, but so I think this is probably a big problem. At least I know it was a problem when I was hospitaler for the Barony of Namron. And then I saw it as a problem when I was Northern Regional as well. Is So how do you go about engaging the current members of your Barony, Shire, or whatever that may be, in helping you as a hospitaler with the recruitment and retention. 
How do you want to do this? <laughs> Just go. Whoever's Just go? go. Okay. Yeah. Should uh, I should could, I get things rolling? Could could you repeat sure. the question again, please? How do you Yeah. Is it about retention? How or? do you engage the recruitment and retention both? So how do you engage the current members of your group in helping you as the hospitaler with the recruitment and retention efforts? Okay. So um, uh, I, I basically hit it from, from two ways when I was, when I was, because I never was the official hospitaler of LC, which is mundanely Fort Worth, Texas. Um, but the deputy I was for six years. <laughs> Um, and then I've also been regional, which is what Katja, uh, Karen is now, um, for central. So, um, the way that I looked at it was, was two ways. The first way was education. It, it's wrong of me to expect anybody to know what the heck I'm expecting. If I don't tell you and show you and help you do what I'm expecting. So education was number one. And I made that as open door and as, as loose as possible. I don't like regimented things and I don't like being micromanaged. So I don't do that to my officers and I sure as heck don't do that to my regionals. I tell them what the expectation is. I'm here for their questions, but I let them do their job because these are capable, competent people and I trust them. So, um, but I make it very clear what the expectation is and I'm right there just in case they need me for anything. The door is always open. The other thing uh, that is absolutely critical in my personal opinion is less this and more this. Um, I want to listen. I'm not there to berate you and I'm not there to, to browbeat you. Again, we are all adults. We are all more than likely professionals in some way, shape or form. And we've all been the new guy and we know that that sucks. And we all know how we wish we would have been treated looking back on our time as the new guy. So I want to listen and I want to hear what are the questions? What are your concerns? What are the things that you're looking for and what do you need? And then I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that I can answer your questions. And if I don't know it, and it's okay for me not to know it, by the way. I'm losing no face by not knowing the answer. But it's a good idea to know who can get you that answer and have no problem whatsoever allowing someone else to get the glory or take the credit for being the one to be able to, to have that moment to shine. It's my job to make sure other people can shine and have their moment. So educate and listen. Those are my two things. I think another way you can get your populace to help you is to is a physical aspect especially if you've got an event coming up and you know you're going to have new people there they're going to need something to wear if, if they're not like me and know how to sew already um, which most don't um, and they probably are going to need feast gear so those are two things you can hit your populace up for and get them involved and encouraged to call out those things they're no longer wearing in their wardrobe, their, their garb closet, or if they're out thrift storing or garage sailing or whatever, pick up a cheap set of plates, bowls, silverware, whatever. Um, and then, you know, there's that way they can do help donate those things so you can have them for the new person at the event. And that's a physical way that they can help help the hospitaler. And something else that, um, am I on mute here? No, I'm not. Something else that um, my team and I did, uh, we would show up to practices. We would invest some time into the current members and their activities and what they were doing. Um, we bring them water and snacks. Um, and also we would bring out our cards and information and, you know, and talk to them about how they can, you know, use those cards to give out to people they know that are interested in and just, and just investing in some time with them and getting to know the current members that are at practices and knowing that we can then have that connection when we get a newcomer to bring them in. And then also, you know, we did, we did the same thing like feast gear and, 
giving them mugs. Um, some of our um, members were asked, you know, that we needed a larger size tunics for newcomers, and some of our members stepped up and either donated a tunic, sewed a tunic, um, and they also uh, donated fabric. So it's just uh, having that buy-in and asking them and making them feel like they're a part of your recruitment efforts. Mm -hmm. Am I where I can be heard now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. One of the things, and she said as having a team, I asked for people who wanted to be able to help, but weren't really where they, and I had a, it's like a band of merry men. I had, I think, five or six deputies, and they each had an area in which they helped and kind of specialized. And it really kind of helped me in that fact of if we had a demo, I knew I had one person who that was their specialty. Uh, at our events, I had a person who had an RV. He always had uh, garb in it. If someone was overheated, they could go there and help cool down. And he always made a point of making sure everyone got welcomed if they came in and didn't know anyone. And it was a very identifiable point. Um, one of the other things on helping to get the populace involved and knowing how they could help was I devised a questionnaire because I have memory problems. And on it was, are you willing to have new people come to you? You know, is that something you're comfortable with? So I knew offhand I had like these 20, 25 people that they had no problems with me just waltzing up to them and going, hey, I have this person who's interested in this, and I know you do this. And on it, I had people indicate which, you know, what things they were knowledgeable in, what things they dabbled in. So I had an idea of what things they were resources for. And that was amazing. I could go to the, that, I never had it actually in a database. I just kept the papers, but I had where from reading over those and knowing the people in my populace that when I had new people come in, it was real easy to know who I could take them to in my populace to immediately form a connection. And from the people who I had the best retention, it seemed that making that connection was the biggest thing because I know this person really seems to help people. And the people who just sort of floated away were the ones that I never could get to connect to anyone other than me. And I can only have so many people trailing behind me at an event that that only works so much. So you trying to be able to find ways as Kate cat off the lap, being able to get people connected into your group was the biggest thing. I think that's true, yeah. Uh, John, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. in regards to that, um, and then this may be touched on later, so I may be get, jumping the gun, but uh, Newcomers Academies, I'm guessing that follows, that falls squarely under the office of the Hospitaller. Um, it sounds like, have, have, I know that Bringwillod has been doing that, um, and I've been to some of those, and they're actually really, really good. I'm, 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 I'm proud of my parents. <laughs> they've, uh, they've done a really nice job. So, um, are other places doing that, and does that kind of address the kind of mission you're trying to accomplish? Can I go for? Oh, I have stuff on the last question and on this. Uh, Newcomer Academy things we've been doing for 30 years, and Jean-Marie got it really spread out throughout the kingdom. Uh, we did them out of Stargate uh, for the longest time because we would get a lot of people in from Renfair every year. And it was set up as newcomer households that were a weekly, different topic, same type of concept thing. Um, currently, I'm coming from Shadowlands, have been here 20 years or something. Um, so I'm coming not from a barony anymore, but from a shire that is based partially around um, a college. So we get a new batch of 
you know, interested 30 to 50 people every August, September. Um, so for us, when we were, uh, the previous thing about um, getting your current members, we have um, sort of a, a very small core group that actually live in town. We have more people, but we cover 10 plus counties in Texas. So we're very, very spread out. Um, so getting the local people, uh, per current members, how to get them involved in hospitaling is uh, you need to, uh, A, train them. I have an entire shire of introverts and Ooh. mostly they don't know <laughs> and are too afraid to talk to anybody. So if you teach them, say this and give them a spiel that they can practice um, for when we have the 20,000 students going through the newcomer things, uh, it, it helps calm them and gets them involved. The other thing to get the, uh, your local current people involved is saying what's in it for them. Uh, and that's, that's really what it is. From when they first start up and we get them as newbies, we are already training them to appreciate and want to do demos once they are current members. Yes. Um, and even as new people, I had somebody, uh, he was in a week and he came and worked the demo the next week, bringing people in and we brought in a lot of people. Um, but unfortunately they're here for X number of years and then they leave. So, um, all the rest of the groups benefit from, from having those people as current, but we have a fairly low current set of people who can do the job. So uh, getting locals, we pretty much know that we all have to pitch in or we won't have a group going forward because we have so much turnover. Um, when we were in Stargate, getting the locals was hard because the demos would be during the day for schools and everybody worked. Um, so having a kit set up, um, and I'm really addressing mostly at demos. I know a lot of y'all were talking about at events, um, but most of what I've dealt with has been at the demos and then retention afterwards. Um, having a kit set up of things they can show, um, what to talk about as sort of just a little demo kit. We used it. Um, I kind of brought mine last year for um, Sherwood <clears throat> because we got out there. And it was basically eh, just do whatever. And I was like, uh, so having that stuff that can go out, that can draw people in to see it, set things people can say if they're introverts, um, things that they can do that you can teach them fairly quickly. Uh, a lot of people learn the basics of ankle weaving like that, and then they can show people who are wandering up as possibly interested. So that helps a lot getting new people or getting the, the current people involved in um, demos in order to bring in more people. That help? I was going to say your comment about introverts. I found with introverts, if they can tell people about something they love and are passionate about, they tend to be much better about talking. But you have to be careful because you'll get them going on that and you get the new people who are like glazing over going, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. so giving them a set, do this and then send them over here or do this and then get them to sign up for more information and come to our orientation session. Right. Um, don't, don't, don't overwhelm them at once. <laughs> oh yeah. Ian, did you have a question? Um, I was a chatelaine at the university of Chicago. Uh, it was a Shire of gray gargoyles. Um, and one of the things that I noticed when I was there is that but a group of really wonderful people. They're friendly, they're kind, they're generous, uh, all that stuff. But the difference between looking like you're, you're an insular, unwelcoming group and just a group of friends talking to each other from the outside doesn't exist. It looks exactly the same. And so one of the things that I did there was to help encourage people to be proactively welcoming to newcomers that showed up mm -hmm. when you when I explained it to them the, pretty much the way I explained it to you they all went yeah that you're right and so helping them build that perspective was really really useful the question that was asked is how do you get your own group to help 
sometimes the question, sometimes your group is actively disinterested in newcomers. Some people in the group have negative experiences working with newcomers. And honestly, the best tool that I found for that was, I don't know if it's still there, last I checked it was, was a tool from the society website for the for Chatelaines was very simply, newcomers are nice. And it actually really addresses a lot of the things that some people may have run into and why they don't want to deal with newcomers and don't want to see them. And I found that it's a really good tool. That's great. Thank you. Katja? You're muted. There you um, go. One of the ways to get your populace involved is to just flat out ask them. Um, <laughs> some of us sit around and we're thinking, you know, oh, what can I do? I want to get involved, but eh, I don't know. Uh, ask them go up to Duke, what's his head, and say, I need you to kind of do a quick intro to fighting for me at fighter practice here. I'm going to let all our newcomers know. Ask them. And ask, be specific. Yes. Ask your artist, hey, can you do a quick demo? I've got a newcomer that's interested in. Um, and another way to get your populace involved is to take that newcomer and team them up with a person. Um, I'm kind of one of those introverted people. I, newcomers creep me out. I'll be honest, newcomers creep me out. So um, I can get them started, I can reel them in, but then I will tag them off to somebody who is also interested in that same thing. I know zero about fighting. I'm not gonna lie, I know nothing. They have armor, that's it. So I need to tag that person off ask members of your populace to be involved. Definitely, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that absolutely helps a lot. Okay, um, so um, we kind of touched on this a little bit with uh, having like newcomers academies and things like that, but what are some other fun activities that you guys have put together for your newcomers? I know Namron a few years ago had like the newcomer event. Um, it was hosted out at their Excellency's house. We had fighting, um, we had scribal, we had a feast out there. And it was just kind of a, it was after um, Medfair, which is our big demo. And so there was all sorts of people out there. Too. We had rapier, we had heavy fighting, we had, what else did we have out there, Kat? Were you there? Thrown weapons, archery. Thrown weapons, yeah, archery. All of it, yeah. 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 So, and we had belly dancing and drumming and bardic at night. It was quite like a its few own people. little mini event. <laughs> yeah. And got quite a few people from that. So, yeah, that was a great thing for sure. Oh, sorry, John Reed. I think, um, basically, I think the question there's a lots of there's lots of different things you can do. Um, and, and I mean, you can go as I mean. The LC Steps group not that long ago had had a thing at at the hockey game. You mm -hmm. can really go outside the box. I would have never thought of a hockey game in a million years. And I'm so glad that the team that put that together did think of it because it was brilliant. We had a ton of interest in it. Um, but I really think um, what works and what doesn't, I think it's kind of regional based mm -hmm. on your group. Because I don't know if the hockey thing would work in, in another area. What if that area doesn't have you know, a sports team that is so incredibly open and inviting to someone. What if you have a group that doesn't have, you know, Duke so-and-so or doesn't have someone to teach the belly dance? I think it, it depends on what your group's dynamic is. And I think it's important for the local hospitalers um, to kind of know their group and know, know what your group can provide and know what they're not so strong at. Um, I mean, it, it's great for us to brainstorm ideas and well, hey, we did this or, you know, well, when I was a hospitaler, we did that and it was awesome. Those are great ideas. And I think those sorts of things can be can be kind of brainstormed. Um, you know, like on the, the hospital or Chatelaine's web pages and such and so forth. And that's great. But I think it's important to know your group and know what your strengths are, know what your weaknesses are, um, and and play towards those strengths. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, definitely. If you've got, you know, 
20 laurels in one night, you don't want to have a big fighting demo because that's not your strength. Your it, strength yeah. is an A&M like, demo. So, in yeah. our group, I mean, we got, we got knights and royal family all over the place. They're everywhere. We have two active laurels. Right. Two. Right. Laurel. It's just Laurel. not, and I've never, in all the places I've been to, I've never seen that dynamic before, ever. It's bizarre. <laughs> but that's the reality that this particular group that I happen to live in, that's what they're dealing with. So, you know, you got to play up to those strengths and, well, but and not like overtax our two laurels. <laughs> Right. That plays into one of the things I would always tell people is whatever you might be interested that was done somewhere in the right. SCA, there's someone who is probably doing it. It may not be here, but somewhere. And so it's that part of getting people connected. If their interests lie outside of what's available in your group, getting them to events and connecting them to people outside your group. I mean, it's that thing of here, if you, you know, this, you know, this event's coming up and I know so-and-so is going to be there. If you're able to make it, I'll make sure you get in, you know, you get uh, to meet so-and-so. And in this day and age, it's so easy to get them in, you know, where they're able to meet online and making those connections that aren't just within your group, but within the society because, as you said, some groups just don't have certain things available. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're, we're a small group. You really have to, we're, we're three hours from everybody. Oh, so yeah. we, we very much, uh, no, we go three hours and we hit like everybody. Um, we, getting people who live in the other groups to come to us with scheduled activities is a thing that, um, that you can do as a hospitaler and uh your local permanent people can benefit from it as well if you're doing right. classes or so and so coming in to teach or getting a regional fighter practice to happen in your group um, so that you can sort of bring the talent to you if your group is one that doesn't have a whole lot of core people with expertise that they can. That's actually a really good point. Um, Susan, sorry, Caitlin, your point was good too, but I wanted to come back to that because it's something that I know that Orlando and I have struggled with up here. We have a lot of new people that come to rapier practice and they'll be at rapier practice every week. And then we'll be getting ready to go to an event and we'll say, hey, there's this event this weekend. There's a rapier tournament. You should go. We will offer to drive these people. We will offer to <laughs> them clothes. It's like, and they still don't go. So uh -huh. I, getting people to go from just coming to the local practices and then making that leap to go to events, that seems to be a hard stop sometimes. It's, it it's a fear thing difficult. for a lot of people. We do, we do Shire goes too. We do, we plan an event where we're planning for everybody local to go to the same thing and we wear livery and so that they don't, feel so singled out um they're part of a clump um a which idea. makes them a little bit easier to integrate yeah. um well, yeah. and everyone wants to wear your team colors when lost we turn to um so so it, that works out really well and then they also get to do group activities together locally making the stuff that everybody's going to wear oh yep. i love that that's great so if so you can get them to bond with each other at a minimum then you can get them to go as a clump to other places and connect them that way. Yeah. And one one of the things that I found, hang on a second, had a FaceTime pop up on my phone. One of the things I found real, one of the most difficult things I found of that nature is when you're at events and you meet someone and you're talking to them and you find out they're from the locale of your barony and you have never met them because they have issues with people in your barony. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you're like, okay. Well, as, as the hospitaler for the area, is there any way I can help you? And it, it's really interesting how sometimes you can help people come back in. And I, I, I helped a couple people who had 
long, long ago been involved. And it was, it was a really interesting thing watching that healing as they came back in and sort of brought their SCA careers around and mended fences. And, but it's, I don't know. Okay. Other people, do you find that a lot of times, a lot of your time is spent talking to people that you never see, that they never make that jump between making contact with you and actually ever showing up at anything? That they're interested, but they never make it to an event or, I mean, make it to a practice or populace or anything? We've always had that. Okay. Stargate back in the day at Ren Fair, it was, if you got a hundred people signing up, 10 will come to your orientation meeting and you might get one to stick. And that was just oh. a long oh, ago, no. that was standard. Oh no, I'm talking to people, people who talked to me, who would send me emails and talk to me and they were interested. But the, and I'm assuming mm -hmm. it was an introversion issue. They just never made it between, I'm really, really interested, I wanna do it and actually coming to anything. Not just having signed a paper. Maybe somebody needed to go pick them up or encourage them, take them under their wing or something. Yeah, I've done that. Or I'll tell them, hey, I've been talking to you. I'm going to be at XYZ. Why don't you come meet me in person? So they know there's a friendly face. That's gonna yeah. Be it's scary, and it was right, one of those. Show up. Oh, yeah. I, and I went to every practice. I went to every every guild, everything. So I was always a point of reference, but I found it was always interesting because there would be lots of people in which there was, there was that interest, but never the ability to make that jump past. And as you said, the people who would come to local things, but events would be a difficult thing to make that next jump or people would go to local events, but then going to kingdom events was a difficult thing to make that next jump. Yeah, I think there are a lot of the factors involved there. I mean, there's, you know, do you have a car that's reliable? Do you have the money? Do you have a job where you work weekends? You know, mm -hmm. who knows? It could be a lot of things. But... Oh, yeah. John, did you have a question? Yeah, well, I had um, in dealing with uh, a running a Ren fair myself, uh, running a martial arts class, doing other activities, reenactment activities, and getting people involved and facing that challenge that Susan was talking about, and I think Caitlin uh, touched on it, is that it is kind of a, a mud against the barn door thing, regardless of what the activity is, you know, you, you can get a lot of interested, or at least initially interested, but then they don't go any further um, and like I said, I've seen that with martial arts classes and a number of other things. And that's just kind of the way the, that it is. And this, uh, the other thing, going back to the guerrilla marketing that we were talking about, um, there was uh, two, two things. Um, one of the things they mentioned is that it usually takes 20 exposures to a thing in, in marketing before people will act on it. That's mm -hmm. why all your major brands continuously market because they know it takes that many exposures and they need to keep, uh, keep in that mind space. And the other thing is with marketing is that it's an ongoing issue. Um, back in the depression, um, there were a number of soup companies and most all of them went out of business because they cut their marketing budgets except for one. And it's Campbell. sold today, Campbell's Soup. Yeah. Uh, just because they kept at it. And, and I know, you know, this is more hospital versus marketing. But in that regard, it's just something that, uh, at least as I see it, is an effort that has to be ongoing yeah. and, and maintained regularly. But you learn over time how to, how to distribute your effort. Um, uh -huh. For us... We have the 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 school uh, student organization fair, which is our humongous twenty thousand people plus go through it in four hours. Uh, the the core people, the um, the the core cadets, 
they come through and we are their thing. They love us. But I happen to know as freshmen, they don't have time for us. Mm -hmm. So I try to actually, it sounds bad to say turning people away, but we don't spend extra, extra time on them because we know they love it. We make sure that they know about it. We'll connect them to our um, online feed so that they can keep kind of keep a, a leg in and keep seeing things. But we don't spend a whole lot of our time trying to convince them to come out because I know they won't have time. I know what their schedules are. Right. Um, it won't happen. So learning when to cut your losses or focus your effort where you're going <laughs> to return is a big thing. That's Absolutely. kind of the same way it is with um, school stu students of any That's age. The young kids see us and they want to get involved. Mom and dad, can we do this? And their mom and dad, no. Um, high school kids too. And the thing is, they may, they may not be able to join at that time, but they'll remember. They come back. And oh, then yeah. when they get older, they know we're out there and they, they come back to us when they mm -hmm. can do it on their own. Yeah. Ian, did you have a comment? I had a, two experiences with, with that that was interesting. Um, I also worked, I was also channeling at IU, Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, my wife moved, dragged me around places, what can I say? Um, and at IU, we were having problems with recruitment retention at, at the University of Chicago. I don't think you're going to find busier students than them. I, I really don't. Um, as busy maybe, but I don't know about busier. Um, and what we found was that having students there or student age people doing recruitment at the tables and things like that, and they're, they're, they're huge universities too. You're going to get that 20,000, 30,000 coming through, whatever it is, um, was, was good and it was nice to have the table and they're interested. But then what we did is the same thing that the other clubs did that night was they held their own little parties. Well, we did a demo and we made sure to have food. We made sure to have a lot of food. We made sure to have homemade food because in their, in those areas, people enjoyed making the food, but pizzas, whatever it was. And then we went from having, when we started doing that at the University of Chicago, we went from having two or three students to, <laughs> yeah, right? So that's not a good thing, um, to having 15 students in the space of two semesters. Um, some were freshmen, sophomores, seniors, didn't really matter to us. I wasn't keeping track. But the idea was is that we regularly had the food. We regularly made it easy to show up. And we regularly had a reason for them to show up. We are also doing activities, garb making, you name whatever else. So we were, we, we were literally, in some people's way of thinking of it, pandering to them. Were we pandering to them? Or were we working with our newcomers and making them successful? And that's what we did. At IU, that's where we did the, the party afterwards and things like that because you could. At the University of Chicago, you couldn't. But finding a way to, to do that everywhere at the, when I was in uh, the Barony of Escalia, uh, I got interested in the SC at age 14. Barony of Escalia is Anchorage, Alaska. Um, and there was a Ren Fair. Okay, yay, Ren Fair. Now there's a newcomers event a month later, specifically designed for newcomers and everything else like that. And so that was their version of it. Yeah, I yeah. find that those kinds of things are helpful. I, I hope I haven't talked too much. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah. We've had an issue, uh, and this maybe is changing subject, I don't know, where we do all of that and we bring a lot in. And we had a year where we had um, too many. Um, and that is the thing that I haven't completely solved is as uh, you have to have the infrastructure um, and activities organized, scheduled, and ready to go prior to bringing the people in. For the people who get to have some people come in every every so often as you go, that's it, it's you you can you can enculturate them pretty good. But we had 91 year show up to one Ooh. orientation meeting. Oh my gosh, I mean, that, that's awesome! But, but oh, Al, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we were sitting in the room only, and we're like, oh my god, how in your core group is how many? Well, that depends on how you count it. <laughs> well, but, but the ones who actually show up regularly. Uh, capable, who can actually do stuff. Yeah. Well, people, we're, we're really 15? spread out, so they have different focus. The ones who participate a lot here at College Station, if we're lucky, yeah. With our newbies, okay. yeah, 15 to yeah. fifteen to 40. We can easily yeah. show up to an event. There'll be 40 of us, but not all 40 of them are involved in newcomer activities or weekly going-on activities because they live over an hour away. 
Yeah. yeah. 90 people so is a whole lot to deal with. There's only like, mm -hmm. there's only like three of us who are constantly. Oh, three. Enculturating all of the newcomers. Three wow. of you to 90. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Whoa. So, so I would just, be, you know, plan well in advance if you're going to have a Ren fair coming or something else, because you may get a whole bunch and you need to already have it scheduled. And this is where you can schedule it out or get people to come in and plan to do things. But the, we've lost people before on years where things weren't scheduled. And so they came in and you had a great demo and you got them all. And then they're like, now what? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, you have to have something to keep them coming back right afterwards. Well, and college, <laughs> college groups are such a special, mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. subgroup anyway. Oh, well, for that, but it's not completely college. Uh, um, we get students, faculty, staff, people in the neighborhood because it's it's a huge. It's it's like uh, the the Norman thing, but down here. <laughs> oh, okay. It's we well, get a lot. Of something Caitlin mentioned earlier, and that was about connecting new people with somebody in the group. You've got to do that. Whether like when I first started back in 1985, if this household hadn't taken me under their wing, I would have not known how to find out where there was an event or when the event was or what I needed or anything. And because of them taking me under their wing, I learned where the event were, was and how to find the, the events. And I've been a paid member since like just a few months after I started playing. And so I got the black star and you know, all that kind of stuff. So you got to get new people somehow connected in with whether it's an individual who's willing to take them under their wing or a household, they don't have to become part of the household, but the household will like, like Bear has a new a household that's for newcomers. And the whole purpose of the household is to help newcomers. And um, that doesn't mean they have to become part of the household unless they just want to, but they're there to help them find their way to events or find garb or whatever it is that they need. So they you've <laughs> got to have that connection. I, I was- He was I one was, of the groups in Stargate back when, when we were doing it there. So. Yeah. I, I was in a group that had had ugly politics with households not a long time before when I was hospitaler. So that was that was a touchy, touchy subject. So I was kind of told to steer away from letting newcomers near households. So that's that one's touchy and it's on basically the academies. Cool. The, the, the academies that we're doing that are a week long and in a neutral space, it's the same thing. It's just called different. Yes. Um, and they have to be a little bit more self-motivating to get themselves yes. there. But still, even if it's not households, we do a survey every year. Um, whenever we get a new person, we have them fill out the little survey thing that is basically information about them and whether they need rides and what they're interested in. And then we hook them up with somebody mm -hmm. who's responsible for nagging them. Yeah. yeah, like a mentor, which that's really yes, good. Yes, mentoring them. But yes. you do have to be careful with households because Orlando and I were actually a member of a newcomer's household down in uh, Florida when we first started playing down there. And it was like we didn't really integrate with the rest of the group, the people that had been playing there for a long time, because we had our whole little newcomer's household. And so that's the, you know, struggle that you have is making yeah. sure that they're integrated with everyone. Yeah, I agree. Here. Households you do have to be careful with. Um, but like I said, if it hadn't been for this household taking me under their wing, I wouldn't have known how to get around. But my point is you have to connect them with somebody, if oh, not absolutely. you and personally. Multiple. You've got to connect them. Multiple, because yeah. so we've had people get connected to one, and then all they do that is that one thing. It's mostly yeah. the rapier, um, and they only do the rapier thing. And then rapier was canceled one day, and they came out to practice because they didn't know. And the rest of us got to talk to them, and then they found out all the other stuff that the SCA also does. Right. So you have to you want to make sure that you maintain contact as well as whoever their activity focused contact right. is. Right. Yeah. 
So guys, we have about five minutes left. Um, is there anything that we haven't talked about that someone has a question about or that somebody wants to make a comment about while we still have a little bit of time? Oh, come on, you guys, we're just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> I, I put a link to the book in the in the comments. So okay, great. Thank you. That's awesome. I was I no, was going to say something that um so the last question was like something fun that we did. Um, uh -huh. So I I came into the SCA by myself. Um, I'm still by myself, and I became hospitaler. I think maybe a few months after I started playing, and um, so I had to look at like what would be well, what, what could I do that was fun that would um, help me get acclimated to like finding things and knowing things like I, my first event was Beltane and I brought my friend from work and she made a gold belt, did not realize that she couldn't really wear a yellow belt. I mean, so these are just like some of the rules that we didn't know. So not this Beltane, we had a virtual Beltane, but the Beltane before we did a newcomer's bingo. So we had a newcomer's tent set up. We did a bingo and it was, and I asked everyone that I put on the bingo, um, find a Duke. I mean, I, I you know, find, um, you know, find the pavilion known as the, as the, the storm, uh, find the, uh, a white scarf, but then they could go and ask other member people and um, they got a prize at the end and we had 40 people that actually finished nice. that bingo. So that, I mean, That's that was awesome. just fun for them and it got them and then people, and then as throughout the, the event, we started noticing that people that finished their card were actually going to the areas that they liked and they were following people around. So I, I mean, I just thought that was really fun. It was really nice to see. And that was, um, you know, benefit of the Barony and, and also the Barony helped. They all donated the drinking vessels that they got at the gift. And um, it was just a lot of fun. I really like doing it. That's cool. Awesome. That's fantastic. That is a fantastic idea. It'd be I love great that. for introverts. Yeah. Because it gives them a reason to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real quick, I want to go to a, a question that we had in the chat because it's very relevant to right now. Um, so with everyone stuck at home for the last two and a half months, how are you keeping in touch with your newest people and keeping them involved? For me, Facebook. Yeah. Discord. A lot of all, people Discord. The younger ones are Discord. They they won't do Facebook. Um, it's Discord. I don't even know what Discord is. What is that? Discord is kind of, it's, um, it's mostly a gamer thing, but it's got channels. So there's channels for each topics of stuff. Um, there's also voice slash video channels. So I've been teaching our Fiber Night. We do it on that with video. Cool. Um, cool. and they can have that. We have a channel that's you know, shenanigans. They, it's just basically a hangout and chat while you do stuff channel. Um, so it's, it's a kind of like face a Facebook group, but it's, um, it's what they're using cool. these days. That's awesome. John's had his hand up for a while. Yeah, John, did you have a question? <laughs> uh, I, I think that something relating to what Cheryl was saying, um, you know, uh, that her friend brought or made a belt and uh, based on sumptuary laws couldn't actually use it. Um, I, I suspect that if there is a way to convey to new people, hey, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to you're going to think you're doing the right thing. You're going to have this idea and it's going to be awesome. And then you're going to find out it's not so awesome. But but that's OK. No, but, you know everybody does it it's it's all right to not be per fully formed perfectly when you when you first get to events um so that was that and the other thing that somebody mentioned food and 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 getting people connected one of the most I, and i've done this in other things one of the most primal ways you get people to connect is by sharing a meal um, so to the person, I, I, I think he left, I think it was Ian, but they talked about how they had food and, mm -hmm. and that's, that's huge. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. Montega started a thing when she was a uh, hospitaler in North Keep of doing grub and gar. Um, when they were having their fighter practice at the VFW building, it was one side, one building had the fighter practice and then it had an, uh, two attached buildings and the other one, people would get together, they would do crafts and talk and whatever. And one month a not, or one night a month, they would do grub and garb and everyone would, would make sure they were in garb and bring a potluck. And that was one of her big things that she started and they still do it, I think. Yeah, that's I'm awesome. not sure where they're doing fight. Well, no one's doing fighter practice yet currently, <laughs> but I'm sure. not sure where fighter practice is currently. And, and it's amazing how much the culture varies by where you do fighter practice. Because yeah. some fighter practices are just fighters. Other fighter practices lend themselves to everybody gathering. You can do some bardic. You can, I mean, there's different things you can do depending on where they meet. And we had, there was one site we had where, and it was when I was hospital or uh, Zubeda taught uh, some uh, belly dancing and we did all kinds of things at that site and it was fantastic. Very cool. Jean-Marie, Jean-Marie, you have something? Just wanted to chime in real quick. Um, John, you just made a comment a little bit ago, and it kind of ties into the conversation we were having kind of before we officially started of having your correct information. Mm -hmm. There's no sumptuary law on the, on the belt. The only one that's protected is a white one. Okay. So now, now traditionally speaking, the whole yellow belt gold belt yeah. whatever you it 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 would be um like if i wanted to wear a gold belt to an event i totally can i'm not a protege but it would not be out of the norm for someone to maybe assume i was and i could just tell them oh thank you this is you know this belt with my husband got it for me i love it am i a protege oh no no it's just for fashion right. and i'm not going right. to get in trouble and there's nothing wrong with that but I just right. wanted to let you know, that's not a sumptuary law. The only color belt that's protected anywhere is a white one. Right. I was, I was just going off of what Cheryl's story about her friend who had this gold oh, belt. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, okay, I, okay. Just wanted to let, I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> like, like, no, yeah. actually, no, no, no. You can, yeah. you, can, you can wear a yellow belt or a gold belt. Okay. And oh, so can like, Cheryl oh. and so can her friend. Just I know that someone might think you were a protege. To my first newcomer revel and got corrected by Duchess Rowan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's totally fine. Like, hey, are you, it, it's okay. Are you a knight? No, I'm not. Okay, just FYI, you know, for future reference. Mm -hmm. You right. want to be nice. Yeah. yeah. Always be polite and be friendly. Nice. And don't jump in my boats. Don't jump to the wrong conclusion. I'm going to warn all my newbies anyway. <laughs> all right guys well any last words because we're at 803 oh, they want to know about organizing demo i was just wondering how other people go about doing it uh, what kind of places uh, they try to find demos um i know that or i have been told and i haven't done it because i haven't been a hospital since i found this out call if especially if you're at, like mergenfeld is Guthrie and there's lots of small towns around the area and that's what they have to pull from so they're going to remain a fairly small group but if they were to call the chamber of commerce of those small groups or if you're in a large city like Oklahoma City you have different areas and you can call the chamber of commerce in those different areas and say look this is who we are and are you having any street fairs or what events that we can get involved in. And that's another place some people don't think about finding demos. When I was hospital in uh, Amron, we used to do just little flash mob demos and they were really quick, easy demos. You just throw on garb and then go to the state fair or the local movie night and all yeah. hang out together and hand out cards. And that was much less high ceremony so we could do more of those more often and get more exposure without mm -hmm. 
driving everyone insane and making everybody work their butts off. <laughs> so yeah, you can make anything into a demo opportunity. You really can. Mm -hmm. You can also do some some focused or what I, I would call like a, a focused experience where depending on what you're looking for, like if you want to build your fighter community, well, where are some of the places you're going to find some people that would be interested in doing the kind of martial arts that we do? So maybe like what uh, Kat was saying, you know, dress in your appropriate clothing and you can go check out a martial arts supply place or a gym or a CrossFit thing, or, you know, some other sporting event where you're going to find people, you know, the local MMA place, you can put some information over there or have a, you know, hey, do you guys mind if we do like a little informational thing, you know, or if you're looking to build your costumers community, you know, go see if you can't do an intro to SCA stuff over at Joann's or your local costuming thing or, you know, you, you know, if you're interested in getting your, your service, you know, area kind of beefed up, why not check out your local Toastmasters or, you know, another group where, you know, learning those sorts of skills are going to be, you know, helpful to your group. And it's totally okay to do those sorts of things in addition to the stuff we've always done. It's, n it's totally fine to think outside the box. My yeah. attitude about being a hospitaler is the SCA is not for everyone. I mean, there are people who just, it's not going to fit them. They just aren't interested. But our brothers and sisters are out there. They just don't know about us yet. We need to have our face out there, at least to inform people that we exist, so that our brothers and sisters can find us. I have seen people go, where do I sign up? Where do I sign up? And they just, they just light up because they found us. But like I said, we're not for everybody. But we need to be out there so we can find those who are. Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate everybody that was on the panel today, and even those of you that, you know, were just here participating, uh, offering your ideas and your thoughts. Um, I will definitely uh, post um, the list, uh, Valana, that you sent me of uh, information, and then um, if anybody has any other resources they want to post, you know, feel free to add those as well. And uh, thank you guys so much, and I hope everybody has a really great night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Fantastic class, you guys. Let's do this again. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.